Satnam and welcome to everyone for another installment in our series called Home Kirtan and Chat. And today my guest is Taran, Taran Singh. And uh, some of you will know him for his music. Some of you may know him for his teaching activities. And uh, if you know anything about his history, you know that he was fundamental in... Um, in various important early beginnings of the Kundalini Yoga community in Europe. And um, I'm guessing we'll touch on a little bit of that as we talk. But first up, uh, Tantaran is going to share with us uh, some music. And his, his offering today is the Mool Mantra. And uh, for those of you familiar, I'm sure you'll enjoy this. Uh, those of you who are not, Mul, Mul Mantra is the very beginning of Japji Sar, and uh, it's composed by Guru Nanak and, uh, from the 15th century, and uh, it's a statement of intention and an invocation of the divine. So we'll talk a little bit more in detail about it after he plays, and uh, the rest of us can just listen and meditate with you. So, Tantaran, whenever you're ready. Okay. Very happy to be here and well, in a little bit in the chat. Karta put it near Bonilla, a car Sai 
Thank you, Satnam. Thank you very much. Wow, brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> Tan Tan Singh and I have played a few times together, and I think we've played that particular melody a few times. We so, certainly have. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's a wonderful, 
uh, familiar and um, yeah, very moving melody. Thank you. I see we have uh, some people uh, from Kieran Deep is in the UK in London, and wow. um, yeah, we've got from people from Belarus from. Ooh. Gottingen, Gottingen, I don't know how to say that, in Germany. And uh, we have from Kansas City, and we have, um, yeah, so a few others. So uh, while we're talking, while I'm talking with Tantaran Singh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask him or us, uh, you know, just put them in the, in the comments, and I'll bring it up, and we'll talk about that. In the meantime, um, I'd love to hear from you, Tantaran Singh, just uh, what it is about the Mool Mantra that uh, helps you feel uh, able to get through this time of COVID isolation. Yeah, I think the... Yeah, I mean, we're living, the COVID is, is just the, the latest in a series of challenges that, that we're facing the disruption of uh, you know, like life as we know it, um, and in 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 these times of uncertainty and what's going on. I mean, who knew we're uh, you know we've been through a lot. I remember I was in the in a in the Shanghai airport when a typhoon hit, and my wife was in Bali when the when the volcano exploded and the fires roared up to just to the door of my daughter's house. I mean, we're living in very uncertain times where, uh, and then we live in this great, you know, the political social turmoil, not only in the United States, but everywhere. And this COVID thing is just, you know, I thought I was just getting used to all of these elements and then COVID hits and it's like, whoa, where did this come from? And talk about, ex you know, expecting the unexpected. Uh, I guess the thing about the unexpected is you don't, <laughs> it's completely unexpected. So I had no idea of this kind of thing. So it's it's really a time um, of, of uncertainty and wondering what it is, what's going on. And in these times in, you know, it, in my life, personal life, or in the life of the society, um, the, what what brings me back into my where where I'm trying to get some perspective of what's really going on here, what's what's happening, what's the bigger picture. When I'm looking for some kind of guidance for myself of how do I maneuver through it, how do I understand this, how do I make sense of this, how do I give meaning to this. I go back to the Mo Mantra because that's what it is. It's the Mo Mantra. It's 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 the root, and um, it helps me. It it elevates me. It reminds me of who uh, of who I really am, and what the underlying nature of the world I live in is, and that gives me that kind of elevates me and gives me a, a broader perspective of what's going on. Kind of relaxes me into you know Kartapurik. God's doing his thing, so let's go with the flow here and let's connect with it and see what is my part in this. What is do I have to learn, and um, how can this elevate me? And how can this give meaning to my life and to the for the people in my life? You know, for me, uh, it's always been about the nod. I mean, yes, you're right. It does that. Uh, anchoring the, the, the words uh, without fear, you know, yeah. um, without enmity, meaning without resentment, without blame, just right. in acceptance, you know, and, uh, and those, that's very good, you know, that, that helps me, that reassures me, but I have to say there's just such power in those, in the nod, in the sounds, that uh, it's hard to resist, you know, it's like, once you start reciting it, everything else drops away. So yes. it's powerful stuff. Yeah, that's great. Um, I thought I'd take you back a little bit in time. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> um, going back to, oh, God, 
let's say 76, maybe, is that when you ended up in Europe? 72. 72. Okay. So I went there in 74. Right. Uh, so you were already established there. We met shortly after I got there, I think. And so um, in your bio, it says that you uh, opened the ashram in, in Hamburg, right? Correct. Right. And that, that, of course, has grown to be a very important center in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the Kundalini Yoga community that has expanded throughout all of Germany since then uh, embodies uh, a community of, uh, I'm guessing, thousands of certified yeah. yoga teachers now, right? Oh, yeah. 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 So wh what, is your, what is your feeling looking back um, about, you know, the times that you were in and uh, how it feels now to be looking back at that? Ooh, big question. Um, yeah, that was a long ago and far away in another universe. And it's almost, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 72 now. And we were like 22 when we... You just had a birthday, I think, yeah? Yeah. Well, congratulations. We were, um, you know, young and crazy. Um, yeah, I always thought you were too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went over, uh, you know, we started in Tucson. We were hippies and then traveling uh, ended up in Tucson. We were going to go to Mexico, but there was free food at the ashram. So we ended up at the ashram. So you're not using the royal we in this. You're, you're actually referring to your wife of how many yes. years now? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> How many years have you been married? Um, since then, so... Uh, okay, 40-something. 40 40-something. Yeah. And um, she started to do the yoga and came home one night and said, I'm moving in the ashram, what are you going to do? And yeah. ended up in the ashram, <laughs> met Yogi Bhajan. He said, why don't you go to Amsterdam? He said, why not? My wife yeah. is pregnant. We ended up in Amsterdam and lived there for several years. And the, there was a, that was where the first continental ashram was, right? Right, right, yeah, as opposed started. to the UK ashram, yeah. UK. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, we were there for a couple of years. And then um, people from, young people from all over Europe would come to Amsterdam was kind of the center and not just for drugs but it was the alternative culture everything all the new spiritual movements everything was there it was a very live place i told parents. my parents it was for the good coffee not anything else but they right, didn't believe yeah. me either <laughs> yeah there, there's the coffee shops the <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> anyway so some Germans came and asked us to come uh, and start an ashram in Germany. So nice. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, you know, um, yogi tea is a, a drink that and a brand of, of herbal tea that is worldwide now and hugely successful as a business. Um, and you began that in Europe, right? You yes, launched that. There was a, a U.S. division and a European division, and you, right. you launched that European division. Well, yeah. yeah. Let's get the story. You and started. others, perhaps, but yeah. No. Well, the royal, royal we. Um, yeah. But the basic recipe came, you know, from, again, from Yogi Bhajan, and it was just mm -hmm. a mixture of spices. It comes out of the Oryo-Vedic tradition, um, and... Um, we figured out, you know, we were trying to survive, so trying to figure out a way of making some money. And we figured out this was the brilliant thing that if you cut all the pieces to the same size, you could mix them because otherwise people were taking whole, you know, sticks of cinnamon and yeah, cardamom right. seed, breaking them mm -hmm. in their mouth and all that kind of stuff. And we figured yeah. that out and, um, started to sell that and then um 
our old friend, Asada Sat Singh, who's passed away a few years ago, but we were great friends. And he saw that living in Los Angeles and said, hey, can you share that recipe? And we did. And so he started what's now the US branch and my wife and I started what's now the European branch. And then our dear friend Sadhari Singh, of course, um, who's now still lives in Germany and has the Ramdas Academy there. He's the one who came up with the what's the the logo that beautiful yogi tea cup with the golden temple in the background. Yeah, so I know it well. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Full disclosure: I I worked for Yogi Tea for ten years, so yeah, uh, we have certainly uh, our history has crossed many times, several places. Yes. Anyway. Um, so let's look at, at your music uh, career. Well, I think we can call it that. So um, you were already playing guitar and, and doing maybe leading some chanting when you, when you went to Amsterdam, perhaps, yeah? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and basically in high school, I'd play a few, you know, folk songs. And in college, I messed around and... Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that was, you know, in the early 3HO community that, as many people, it was one of the things that drew me is the music and, and how um, it was integrated into the, the whole thing. We were in Tucson with Sat Nam Singh, one of the, who every night would bring out his guitar and sing and we'd chant mm -hmm. and sing songs. And yeah. Um, and so, you know, kind of just shifted the, again, like everybody took the melodies and started to make spiritual songs and chants about what was, them. Can you remember your first effort to compose a melody for a chant? Oh gosh, it, it was, yeah, it was probably the um, Ekankar Satnam Siriwai Guru. Okay. Yeah, it was um, back in the early days of this movement. That was the main mantra, really. Um, yeah, yeah, we did it for sadhana, and uh, so yeah, lots of melodies needed to support through right. that. Um, so then you, um, your life took you back to the U.S. and then back to Europe, and. Yes. When was your first professional recording released? Well, that was uh, it, what you just heard. Um, with with Sonatum, was that the first Sonatum, recording? Yes. Yeah, we, with Sonatum I was Corps. in Eugene, Oregon at the time. Um, there was a big natural foods plant there. And I was there learning how to be a production manager so we could do that in Europe. And mm -hmm. Sonatum was freshly graduated out of university with a chemistry degree and she was mm -hmm. in the r d department there there always was, i've got pictures of her in her lab coat um, yeah. and i was teaching yoga classes there and in the yoga classes there was a uh, man named jaiji sangeet singh that's his spiritual name who was just a fabulous guitarist I mm. and i was working to put them together because i knew Day. And, and somehow we came up with, well, let's all get together and do a sadhana. And um, so we would get together. And, and I remember it was the first, they were coming over to my house and it was the first night. And I thought, well, we should have something to start with. So I grabbed my guitar and I liked those, the, those, those chords and came up with the Mo mantra. Yeah, yeah, and then you recorded it that you know in that recording just yeah, before I that, went back to Europe, and it's now a classic. <laughs> I still play. I still well, you know, every time we do something, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the one I love. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to leave behind, you know, to move on to something else when it seems to resonate so deeply. So I yeah. understand that. Yeah, yeah. And you have a new recording that came out what just under a year ago. Yeah, um, yeah. When I got to Europe, uh, that's when I 
you know, my, the first thing with, with with Sonatum is we went into the studio and they were, you know, you're, you, they wanted to do the guitars and they everything, and we we didn't want to do that, so we sat in a circle and just did it live, basically, you know. And then I went to my, Europe. My guess is, my guess is, you've never recorded that way again. No, <laughs> no I went to Europe, and then um, I don't know. I came up with the Ardas Bai, which is my favorite meditation. Mm -hmm. My, you know, Guru Das again, another friend who's departed this earth, but mm -hmm. one fabulous musician and a dear friend, and he heard it and. He got me down to Barcelona where he was living and with him and Rudy Daskar, who was his wife at that time, we recorded, that was my first real professional. I see, recording. okay. And the most, re and then I've done, I don't know, several in between. And the most recent one is um, Travel Light. Just happy to have Oh, just happen to have one there. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, good. Which um, it seems, you know, I've I've listened to the wonderful tunes on there, and yeah. and it seems like um, this CD is coming out of a new perspective or a, a particular place in your life. Yes. Perhaps. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and it, th this is. Um, you know, when I was in college um, and a hippie, um, you know, I'd write songs mm -hmm. and then got into 3HO and then it was uh, it moved more into um, mantras. And, and anytime I came up with a melody or something, I'd kind of turn it into a mantra. And every once in a while with a song, but the songs. Mm -hmm. And um, more recently, it's, I've, well, actually, it has to do, it started with, again, Guru Das, with my dear friend. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'd had busy lives and hadn't had that close of a connection. And we started to connect again. And he said, you know what, we, we need to write some songs together. So um, that was on the horizon. And then we found out that he had... Um, pancreas cancer mm. and so the time was short and I he actually poo, like he I happened to be in Europe he, he was living in Sweden I happened to be in Europe he called me when he just got back from the doctor and said I've got this so I was about to go back to the US but I got on a plane to go see him and on the plane ride, I'm going, Ooh, you know, this is my dearest friend and I'm dying. And, and I thought, well, what are we, you know, what, what can we do? What, what, what can I do? What can I say? And I thought, well, okay, we're gonna, we wanted to write, let's, and I just started to put down words, you know, I thought, let me come up with something that we can start with. And, um, so that came up with what ended up being uh, a, a song, Nothing's Gonna Stop This Train. <laughs> and I remember landing nice. and I, I, I gave him, the, I showed him the words. He sat down immediately, picked up his guitar and had a melody immediately. I mean, this is his mm. musical brilliance. He started to sing the words and I thought, oh, he's improved them. You know, he's done something to them. And I looked, no, he was singing the words I'd written, but just him singing it. <laughs> somehow. Well, phrasing yeah. is everything, you yes. know, that it can really shift yeah. the meaning somehow subtly. So that's great. So then and, he added some things and, you know, we came up with it. And if on, on the CD, the most, and then he, you know, he, he eventually passed away. And then in the same year, our dear friend Sarasat Singh, who was, also very close, passed away. So this was a year, and I turned 70. I mean, mm -hmm. turning 70, you wake up one morning and you're going, what? How did, huh? How did Seems that Seems like happen? I was just 17, wasn't that? Just yesterday? You know? Yeah. And yeah. so with them passing away, you know, mortality's right in your face. You can't, 
put it off anymore. Mm -hmm. So I found myself kind of dealing with this through song. And so, I, you know, several songs um, came out of this. And so this CD ended up being more songs than mantras, where previously it was really all mantras and maybe a song here and there. And, and songs about my just, you know, this, what is, you know, growing old, facing death, losing friends, and digesting that and then putting that into perspective. Again, it really comes back to the whole mantra, you know, <laughs> putting that sure. within that mm -hmm. perspective of, thing, uh, you know, recognizing the human and then expanding that and, and getting that, that, that larger perspective of it. So it was, it's really, uh, you know, a CD that helped me process all that and, and, uh, and yeah. Yeah, and um, I believe you, you did the recording uh, again in Italy like many of your other recordings, right? Yes, basically all of my recordings have been... Uh, uh, Except your first one. One in Eugene maybe. and one in Barcelona, and then okay. uh, early on... I met a yoga teacher who's also just another fabulous musician who, you know, has had a little recording studio and we've been working together for 20 years. Right. So it, Again, you know, when you find something that works, it's not easy yeah. to turn away from it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You get to, you know, each other, you know how it, we have a mm -hmm. rhythm and a way of working together. And he has wonderful musician friends and, um, you know, and if you have to go to Italy to record, I mean, you have to make sacrifices, I know. But. So um, how's your upcoming tour going? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We're <laughs> That's right, touring in the living room and then to the sunroom and yeah. Tomorrow night we'll be in the library. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have uh, hopes or, or projections that that you might be able to get out there and play some music uh, somewhere down yeah. the road soon? Well, this is um, you know, it's I, I retired two years ago, and retirement meant getting on working an harder. Yeah, you never get off an airplane. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've been traveling you know, three fourths of my time. And so this Corona has really brought me and it's been a wonderful Rahal for me. Sure. You know, but um, the next plan thing is in the fall to Australia. So we'll just have to All right. see and well. from Australia to China and well, it's interesting you mentioned uh, Australia because I just am communicating with our friend Daya Singh, oh, wow. Daya Singh uh, who lives in Australia, to be a guest on this show. Uh, it'll happen in early June. But anyway, if you if you see him there, I'm I hope he'll say hello. And yeah, I've never had the 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 honor of meeting him, but he was uh, you know an early inspiration for me about you know what you can mm -hmm. do with spiritual music and particularly coming out of our Sikh tradition and you know how you can bring that into the you know the old and the new coming together and absolutely yeah one. and uh so so i guess you've been doing some teaching online and yes. now today you did some music online so yes. maybe that's a first for you um yeah. but um you want to tell us a little bit about the teaching that you're doing? Yeah. Um, well, I, I was supposed to go to Greece and be at the Greek Yoga Festival. And so they then moved that online. So I. Did, did, did you say Greek Yogurt Festival? Yeah, the, the Greek Yogurt Festival, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I couldn't resist. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you were saying you were going to go to Greece. I'm going to the Greece. So I've been to Greece, and then I've been in Napa, California. I taught there online. 
-huh. My daughter has a teacher training there and I was finishing up uh, a course there and then more recently in Russia. So mm -hmm. I've even got a, um, tomorrow I'm back in Russia and starting a four week um, teaching program based on uh, around relationships in this time of COVID. Interesting, yeah. It's. Um, I was just actually speaking with my wife about how uh, challenging relationship can be during this time, because you can't get away from each other. No, <laughs> you know, and uh, so yeah, it takes some creativity and a lot of patience. Right. And and so with your close to fifty years of marriage experience, then this seems to be a a good fit for you to be talking about relationship. Yes, it is. And, and it's, it's a, you know, I realize, I, I, and again, this COVID really brings it home. You know, the, 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 I know the quality of my life is reflected in the quality of my relationships and, and particularly the relationships of the people closest to me. And now in this time of COVID, you know, we're in these four walls with those people who are <laughs> closest to us. And so we're, it, it really is. And, I find I, I find that um, even maintaining close relationships that aren't in the same space, yes. you know, electronically, doing yes. it through um, through face uh, FaceTime and and things like that, it takes it takes a little more effort it does. Uh, somehow than than it seemed to uh, before, or maybe it's just that we value that we the, the value. <laughs> is so much more, um, oh, I don't know, precious. You know, it is. That, I think, we, yeah, we, we become more aware of how important they are. And it is. It's like, uh, again, connecting with, um, you know, if I'm supposed to be in Europe and I can't be there, then I'm missing those people and I'm missing that connection. And to be able to, I realize how I, important it is to me and to be able to do this electronically is really really nice. it helps a lot it helps a lot to have the ability to see people's faces it does it's i yeah. i was thinking about that how you know it would be if first of all i mean first we have the internet what if we well when you you and i first went to europe um you know we were over in germany you know, 5,000 miles away from home, so to speak, and no internet, no fax. If you wanted to make a phone call, you had to call the operator and book time. You know, um, you wrote letters. Uh, yeah, I, I have no nostalgia for those days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't miss it at all. Um, I remember my my parents getting airmail letters, you know, right. from their relatives and and... So yeah, we we really, I think, are very lucky, fortunate, blessed to have these electronic tools, so we yes. can do like what we're doing today, talking and seeing each other, and and others can tune in and share that experience. I think it's amazing. I don't know how we could get through this without that. No. Um, I'm kind of wondering whether you would be prepared to share. Just a few minutes of, of perhaps that song, um, Ain't Nobody Gonna Stop the Train. Is that what it is? Oh. Yeah. Just a way to kind of close out the, the day. But if there's another song that you feel more comfortable with. No, I, I, I just, like that. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> um, here it is. I haven't done it in a while, so I just wanted to get the chord progression. It, and the on the CD. By that he means, by that he means he hasn't done it today. <laughs> <laughs> I know your on, tricks. On the <laughs> on the CD, that was fourth. Um, we Gudadas and I did, uh, you know, put it together, and then we recorded it on a iPhone. Oh, really? You okay. know, when we're going to go, we wanted to go to the studio and da, 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 da. 
but that never happened. And he played the ukulele on it. And so he took the bass of that recording, um, and then my friend, my friend Hugen, in Italy, he took that and then did his best, you know, to adjust it, but then it also added just a few little things to, to fill it out. So it's, for me, it's very touching because it's, you know, it's his voice and his playing. Um, and, and the last time, well, it wasn't the last time I, pl I played with him one more time. Okay. <laughs> Time is a tunnel boring through space Filled with the top of ever-shifting shape Oh, there ain't nothing No, no, nothing gonna stop this train Oh, yeah Oh, there ain't nothing No, nothing gonna stop this train Stars fill the sky, moon shines bright. They will always turn to night. And there ain't nothing, no, no, nothing gonna stop this train. Oh, oh, there ain't nothing, no, no, nothing gonna stop this train. So when you hear the whistle blow and the conductor calls your name, turn your back to all that was. Feel the sunshine on your face, cause we're, we're leaving the station, destination unknown. Oh, there is nothing, no, nothing gonna stop this train. Oh, there's nothing, no, no, nothing gonna stop this train. Everything comes, everything goes, lost in love's everlasting glow. Ah, uh, there's nothing, no, no, nothing gonna stop this train. Oh, yeah. No, there's nothing, no, nothing gonna stop this train. So take my hand, hold on tight. Nothing to fear, nothing to fight. Cause there's nothing, no, no, nothing that's gonna stop this train. Oh, no. Oh, there's nothing, no, nothing gonna stop this train. So when you hear the whistle blowing, and the conductor calls your name. Turn your back to all that was. Feel the sunshine on your face. Because we're, we're leaving the station. Our destination unknown. But there's nothing. No, nothing gonna stop this train. No. Oh, there's nothing. No, no, nothing gonna stop this train. Uh, I feel like blowing the whistle. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that was his line. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. Well, I want to thank our guest, Tun Tun Singh, for uh, sharing his time with us, sharing music 
and uh, talking a little bit about history and and good times and a little struggle through what we've got now. But um, sounds like nothing's going to stop this train. That's so right. that's right. What are you exactly. going to exactly? <laughs> yeah. So um, I want to say to all the people who have been listening, thank you for uh, coming along on this little journey Great with Tantaran Singh and. Um, we'll be back next week with Sarasat Simran Singh of Chardi Kala Jatta fame. And I uh, hope you'll join us again then. And I'll be available at the same time, Tuesdays and Thursdays, for the program, Your Miracle Mantra Moment. So I hope to see you there as well. And uh, everybody, we wish you that you can stay healthy, stay safe, and stay home if you can. And blessings to you all. Satnam. Satnam.